and Twitch. International Master William Pascal, aka Slaggy, on Poker Stars. I mean, on <laughs> just kidding. On um, on Twitch, and um, we are Sparkle Horse on Lee Chess. No more Poker Stars for now. Anyway, um, full time chess here. I've been doing this for over a year now, and um, things are going pretty well. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And those who have supported the stream with donations via PayPal help to make it possible. Well, you guys are awesome. Our moderator, our moderators, because Yaron has been missing for a couple days, Blue Crow filling in here. Much, uh, much appreciated. The Ominous Monkey says, I found some theory about the game of yesterday that eventually leads to a draw. The study of Pawn Spanker. Okay. Ominous Monkey. Name C30. What do you mean, name C30? That looks like an ECO code or something. Um, I know who Ponspanker is. So he made a study about about that game. Actually, he plays the Mora. Is that is that the connection there? Are you talking about which game? I'm, I'm speaking in, like, broken English now. Are you talking about which game? I'm a little slow in the uptake, although I drank my coffee pretty fast here. Hopefully the stream will work. My stream on there is looking kind of slow, but we've got zero dropped frames. The name of the study is C38. Okay, but I didn't know which game it was about. Um, I'm assuming like the Mora Gambit because I was interested in that, but maybe not. Maybe maybe it was a different game you guys were focusing on. Um, I had to refresh my, my uh, stream there. Guys, we've got challenges from Andrea Peroni. Blue Crow is challenging to Chess 960. I'm willing to play up to two Chess 960 games. Guys, I just had to refresh my Twitch chat. So if you just sent me a message um, in the last five seconds, the last message from Ominous Monkey, your last sentence you might want to retype back into the chess box, uh, chess box, the chat box with the chess box. Um, you might want to retype that last message. I think I missed your last your last post there, Ominous Monkey. If you answered my last question, I didn't see it because I had to refresh my my stream. Um, Blue Crow, we're going to play two Chess 960 games today. Mule Skinner, World Loser, Constant Change, all the regular customers. The usual suspects, I should say. Rather than customers, it's more like suspects. I'm feeling kind of paranoid. Constant Change reached 2222. He's going up. But I think he was there yesterday. Um, I don't think that's new. He didn't he didn't change since yesterday, but he certainly plays like it. Um I'm not surprised by that one. Let's see. I think all these guys were loser. I mean Blue Crow's kind of well, that's the chess nine sixty. But um Okay, what else? Oh the time patrols today, guys. Casual games between five three and eight three. Same as yesterday, just no weird openings today. If everybody played the King's Gambit against Constant Change, his rating would probably be even higher. I've lost two Falk beers already. Um, what else? No Simul on Sunday. I'm traveling to Seged, or whereabouts, in Mako, which is very far from Budapest. So I'm not going to be back till after my Simul would probably already have started. Um, helping the, the team... The Hungarian army team not get eliminated from the first division. Hopefully, I'll at least not lose. Um, let's see. What else is news? I don't know what else What else to talk about, so let's get started. Um, Andrea Peroni, if you guys have any chess questions, feel free to uh, send it into the chat. You can do like an Ask the Master kind of thing here is basically going on all the time. Um, you don't need to watch a special show to Ask the Master. You guys can just ask me while we're playing. Andrea Peroni hasn't been around here very much. Good to see you, man. Um, he actually might play the Smith Mora. Come to think of it, it's been so long since I played him. I'm sure, he's busy studying or some odd thing. Um, let's play the Peart's defense. I was actually thinking yesterday. I haven't played a Peart's in a long time. I played the Modern sometimes. 
The Peerts isn't really part of my regular repertoire, but it is an opening I did play around with at times. Um, even after I around the time around the time that I reached master, I still occasionally play the Peerts. And I was just thinking, like, which openings don't I play? Bishop E2. Um, this is a special variation that I, f I found in an old Russian book I bought at the second-hand market um, here in Budapest, ironically. Like, White tries to play, like, H4 really fast. It's actually a known line. Um, but I think there's a good antidote I found, according to that old book. Well, he didn't do it, though. I mean... H4 is kind of the main idea, I think. G4, okay, that makes some sense too. But H4, and the the line that I found was actually H4, C5. Pawn takes C5, Queen A5, King F1. With a very interesting play. Kind of like a Palugievsky variation of the Grunfeld, <clears throat> but um, against the Peerts. All right, G4. Coffee house attack, basically, but it should be taken very seriously. I'm sure this is a variation too, maybe better than H4. I don't know. Um, I mean, normally flank attack should be met with an attack and you know a, a strike in the center. Oh, ominous monkey, right, right, okay, the king's gambit line, okay, great, of course, that was the last thing we were, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit memory, memory lapse, how do you, how do you turn memory lapse into like a adjective, um, memory lapsable, so I'm vulnerable to memory lapses, I don't know why, actually I used to have a pretty good memory, especially when it came to chess, but lately, Lately, I don't know, maybe I have a vitamin B12 deficiency or something because I'm really struggling with remembering stuff. Um, too young to be senile. Early onset Alzheimer's is, is not likely. But I read somewhere that vitamin B12 deficiency can cause memory problems. Um, yeah, G4 now. All right. I think this is C5 idea still holds some water. But maybe it's not as good because he's playing g5, and um, and that's the key. I need that knight to threaten e4 if I play this. So c5 doesn't really work here. h6 is passive. Interesting move would be like d5 actually, but I think that's kind of bogus. I mean, he just plays e5. It looks like a bad Gurgi needs a Karo Khan. Nah, this is annoying. Um, I have to admit, my knight's going to get attacked unless I play h6 or h5. h5 doesn't stop it. h5 looks bad, too. So what do we do? It's really a tough one. Um, I would think it would be obvious, but I don't see it. I mean, e5, I guess, if nothing else. Just getting some stake in the center. I guess I'll play e5. I really don't have a better idea here. What was... I missed something here. I missed your deleted message. So... HT 1992, I can't really judge you. Because I don't know what you said before shitload of money. Um, it might have been offensive. And Mubot certainly banned it. But um, we don't know what you're talking about. So if you could if you could rephrase it in a non-offensive way, that would be helpful. <clears throat> um, Alright, so this is this is the default plan. Um, this way my knight doesn't get kicked back to g8 or something ridiculous like that. 
We play a kind of King's Indian type of position. But I could see this this could be quite vi viable for white. I don't know. I mean, a lot of people would have played like e5, traded, traded on e5, but that's pretty modest. I don't think that trading queens is really what white's after here, you know? So, knight f3. Do we want to give up the center or do we want to... What do we want to do? Do we want to play knight c6 and play a closed position or do we want to play pawn takes pawn? And then... I don't know, man. I don't really like giving up the center here. He's got this g5 pawn clamping down and... I'm not sure I really like anything here. It looks like white's better. I mean, this space is very annoying. I still don't think I reacted the right way. D5 gets an exclamation point? Seriously? Oh, you're talking about... Oh, yeah, D5 gets an exclamation point. Right, okay, you're talking about the, the, the study. Okay, later maybe we can take a look at that. But um, they're talking about a weird line in the King's Gambit. All right, guys, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to play a move at random here. I really can't decide, but taking on d4, knight takes d4, knight c6, bishop e3, also unimpressive. And I'm not sure this is any better for me. Um, we can play knight d4, actually. Probably we should, trying to trade some pieces here. But there is a problem <clears throat> with knight d4. Maybe we can't. Pawn on g5 is very restricting. Guys, if you want to play any kind of challenge between uh, between 5 and 8 minutes with a small increment, 3 to 5 seconds, the uppermost time control I'm going to play is 8 plus 3. The minimum is 5 plus 3. Okay, ominous monkey. So you guys are talking about... They're talking about this... Uh, His tree free trial period is up. You said the Gladys troll his free trial period is up. Alright, knight knight d4, take take knight b5. Uh, I don't know if I can sack a pawn here. Would I have adequate compensation of any kind? You know, I'm I'm kind of like not really impressed by my game after that, so it doesn't look good. Um it really doesn't look good. Maybe I have some kind of compensation there, but it doesn't really look like enough. Castles, knight takes d4, what am I doing? Yeah, I don't think I can do it, dude. I don't think I can sack a pawn. I just can't justify it. Knight d4, take, take, knight b5. c5, hangs d6. I have no moves. This is extremely unpleasant. Black is passive here. It's like a bad King's Indian where I'm a little bit restricted by g5. I mean, it's not like I'm resigning, but I don't have any counterplay. Maybe h6. Or even h5. The best I can do is just kind of keep the position blocked. Um, if I play like f6 at some point, maybe. Maybe I want my, my knight to go to h7, that looks ridiculous. All right, so we're gonna need to play um, on the queen side eventually here, which is kind of unnatural. I never remember Andrea playing this kind of positional squeeze before. Not really his normal modus operandi. He's usually playing wild tactics and sacrificing pieces and stuff. But we haven't played in a long time. Maybe he changed his style since the last time we played. I don't really like 
castling, but I, I don't like being on the queen side either. Or my, I don't like my king anywhere here, basically. Um, f6 now. Well, I guess we go for it. This is kind of insane, actually. It's kind of insane. Maybe it would be better to play f5, actually. I had a game like this a couple months ago in the Hungarian team championship against a guy who was like 2200 and I just I offered a draw because the position is just insipid black has no space and luckily he took it he was a kind of incompetent fide master who was around 2200 and the guy has a tendency to like blunder and make really bad moves so I thought well he has very little self-confidence and honestly even if he did play it out, he might make a terrible mistake and lose. So I offered a draw in a, in a terrible position. Now Andrea goes crazy with knight g4. Um, I offered a draw in a terrible position. And he took it, and I was kind of like actually regretful that <laughs> that he had taken the draw because I was like, oh, maybe he would have lost, you know. Um, so Andrea, you had a great position, but there's just no call to sacrifice a piece there. Um, you know, you've got to realize how good your position is. And... And understand that you're in a situation where it's not practical to take a risk. Your your game is too good. After f6, you should just take on f6 and you have a clear advantage. What happened? f5, bishop, h5. Now this, this actually looks unsound. I'm going to take another one. We have a lot of knights where that came from. This queen also controls <clears throat> patrols the diagonal here. There is mate in one. But Andrea just went completely berserk. He didn't understand how terrific his position is. I mean, materials even. And it doesn't look like he's winning, but strategically, without sacrificing a piece there, I think black is on the verge of, of being strategically lost. If you don't go crazy, Andrea. Um, you know, so just nothing fancy at that point. I'm just going to bite the bullet here. Oh, I'm going to lose a piece, actually. All right, say la vie. We have more than a piece to give back. <clears throat> say la vie. Right? We can give back a piece, and we're fine. And we've got more. More where that came from. I have the feeling Andrea doesn't play a lot of increment chess in his free time. And I didn't either until I started doing the stream, believe it or not. You guys think I'm this increment old fogey who only played internet increment chess, but I was looking at my games from Internet Chess Club last last night and the old games I my my statistics from I never go on there but just randomly decided to look at some stuff and I'd actually been playing bullet chess a lot. Um, around 10 years ago, I was playing a lot of bullet. My ICC rating was around 24, 2400 in bullet. I don't remember that at all, though. It's so strange. 10 years ago was like an eternity. And, uh, honestly, I never really liked bullet. I guess I was just doing, doing it at some point, you know, for whatever reason, because I was bored, but... I never ever had been into playing bullet, but I guess I had played like 500, 1,000 games um, of bullet that I had completely forgotten I had played. 
So I'm competent at bullet once I practice, but I don't, you know, I don't really see the point. Um, and I've never been very skilled with a mouse. I've been kind of mouse handicapped ever since around 1990, 1996. I, I think in the last 20 years, it, it, 20 years ago, I realized I was, I was mouse. Special needs in mouse skills. Can we legally castle queenside? Absolutely. Lee Chess loves to force you to castle queenside when you don't really want to. But, <clears throat> I mean, this this was a tragedy for, for Andrea because he has a beautiful strategic advantage and probably big advantage, like more than a pawn. In, um, whoops. <laughs> don't make an automatic automatic move there running out of stuff has been called Andre you play the opening really well should play more strategically more often you had a beautiful positional advantage <laughs> the g5 just messed me up um, watch out our 960 game says Blue Pro. There's just no way you can ever do anything to me here. You're down a rook and bishop. So he just sacrificed pieces needlessly and I appreciate it because I was worried about the game. Um, <laughs> this is like really, really unnecessary, but whatever. <laughs> B6. Overly cautious. So hopefully, guys, we're going to be streaming till 1230. We have time for probably 10 games of uh, anything up to 8 plus 3. 500,000 games. Why is he still playing? So it's been 10 years since I played any bullet games. That's what it looks like, anyway. Around 2000, 2007 was the last time I played Bullet. Or at least, that's when I reached my, my Bullet maximum. I never played very many. Actually, I remember a time when I used to play 2 Minute. Which I always enjoyed a lot more than, than 1 Minute. When Internet Chess first became popular in the mid-90s, Late 90s, I started playing a lot of 2-0, which I find much more rewarding than 1-0, which just seems like you're just basically making random moves from the beginning. But if you want to improve your game, your tournament level chess, then I don't think you're going to do it playing 1-0. You, you improve your tactical acumen probably, but there's so much more you can do for your game, basically. Um, yeah, let's surround the queen. No way out. The quiet move. Constant Change said, I have a chess.com account. I played 10,000 games. Standard Blitz and Bullet. Why? I would assume that the majority are, are Bullet with that kind of numbers. Um, I still can't like give mate here. Whoa. I forgot I, I forgot I was gonna lose on time. This is a bad move. You have Queen F four check now. Okay, I have King E eight there. It's not such a bad move, I guess. Alright guys. Um no but you know what's going on with the opening here? Bishop E two, bishop g seven, g four. I just wanna check this before we move on. Um what am I supposed to play there? I guess if you're if you're you're real sharp, you might try you might try even c5, but c6. I don't understand c5 actually. That doesn't look right. C5, c5, d takes c. What are you gonna play? Like queen a5. White has queen d5 there. In some lines, no, I don't think c5 is right. C6, interesting, but okay. Bishop g7, h4. See, that's what I said. That's the main move. 
h4c5. This is what I found in the old Russian book. But g4, and I'm supposed to play c5. And I said g, I said d5 jokingly. And then were you talking about this blue crow? You said d5 is given an exclamation point. Were you talking about no? Queen f4 is not a perp. It's just king e8 resigns. Um, d5 is actually a good move. Wow, that's weird. I wasn't impressed by it. I thought the d5, e5, we just have like a really weird Karo Khan. I mean, what, what's going on there? Why is d5 so great? Because he needs to play f4 and his like h4 square is weak or something. Majority of players played c5 here, but I didn't understand this. G5, knight fd7, and they go into a kind of, uh-huh, well this guy Karen Mosissi and Shendor Videki, they're not exactly like world-class players, um, I don't know, um, I mean good players don't play this line very often for white, but I'm, I'm kind of unconvinced by this, d5 according to the engine, now we're in better company with Mamad Yarov playing a game with black. Um, e5. This I didn't know. This this could, could be good. But it looks like a crazy position. Smades versus Mamad Yarov. That's the only game between good players. Hmm. It's an interesting line. Anyway, it should be analyzed a little bit more. Not easy to face that when I never play the Peerts. All right, guys. Good choice of opening. Um, and then, like, last thing was that I thought he had a tremendous position after f6 here. But I'm, I'm maybe underestimating, overestimating his game. The computer thinks it's only a small advantage. Pawn takes f6. I was even considering sacking the exchange with, like, bishop takes f6, bishop h6, bishop takes h4 entered my mind. But that's just crazy because he has this. So I would have to take back with a knight on f6. Black's position looks a little strange. I have to say, you know, white is better here. <clears throat> All right, guys, Blue Crow is playing chess line 60. Ironically, you said it at the exact moment when I mentioned d5, Blue Crow. And that's what I thought, too, that you were talking about the King's Gambit game from yesterday. Our last game from yesterday was an interesting a very unusual and rare line of the King's Gambit. And they were analyzing it in a study with Pawn Spanker, one of the guys who sometimes plays in my simuls. And also here on the weekly stream. So at the exact moment that I suggested the move D5 in the opening, they were like, D5? And it, it is like the key move for black in this line. And um, it was given an exclamation point. It turns out d5 is always good. All right, those bishops. No knights in the corner. That's good. I could play b6 and trade the bees. Leaving my king in a really messed up place. With no protection. Yeah, I think, I think that b6 is a fundamentally bad move for me. Trading my own kingside defender. We're just talking about king sides. Um, to see all my <clears throat> stupid games in my computer. My computer has like 30, it has very little space now. I have so many silly programs on my on my computer and videos for, for chess recorded videos. I need to free up some space on my computer because we're running out of space again. I have like very little free space. Um, g3 d5 let's play in the center actually that allows queen h3 check losing immediately damn all right never mind we can do the the, the symmetrical response with g6 f5 looks interesting this is an idea that I, I have to be careful with so d5 queen h3 check amounts to a pawn sacrifice i don't think that i can really afford that so f5 maybe 
the Dutch. This is probably a bad move. I wanted to not not just copycat White's moves. What is your thought on one e three? There was this math expert at my chess club in Boston that used to play that sometimes. Actually, e three is kind of like okay because it's just basically a Queen's Indian sort of reversed. You can play with that move order. The weirder move for me is d3. Like, I would see this sometimes and not, not really understand d3. But e3 makes some sense because, like, d3 has very little, if, if not, no independent value. Whereas e3 will typically, like, reach some kind of reverse Queen's Indian. I think that e3 is okay. d3 is a move that's much more mysterious, in my opinion. Um, okay, knight f6, we're playing the Dutch. We need more Dutch in our lives. Our moderator left. I hope he's alright. But he was actually logged on a few days ago. The big fat panda shows up and he's like, Are you a Democrat or a Republican? Sorry, maybe you're in the wrong place. This is <laughs> this is a chess stream. Um I, I try not to let my partisan um my partisan political values uh have a say in my in my chess stream no comment maybe if you hang out with us on a regular basis you get a feel which way I I, I would be more likely to go but um, <laughs> I'm a chess player man we're all chess players you know it's <laughs> it's ridiculous this is the, the ill in our society at the moment, you know, people letting like politics interfere with their human priorities. Uh, chess is much more important than politics, sir. <laughs> um, let's go with knight gf6. It's so weird to, to see like knight g f six in the score here. Um, I love all of my viewers, Republican and Democrat, and Independent, Libertarian, Socialist, Communist. Saddest troll is a communist, I think. Um, is that right, Troll? Are you communist? I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know if Troll's here today. I think he was. I think that Trump is a good snooker player. That's my personal opinion, but some people think he's he's not the best. I don't know. E3. We've got to play G6 at some point. Okay, Blue Crow, you're playing very slow. Wow, now there's a move. Rook d3. Rooks first, then knights, then bishops, right? He's gearing up for this. Lateral mom momentum. Honestly, Blue Crow, I mean, that looks like <clears throat> pretty, pretty rudimentary. All right. I'm still allowed the castle on, on the left side, right? Because we don't have king side and queen side. Here we have politics, left and right, right? We have to, we have to choose the left or the right um, in chess 960 because there is no king side and queen side, per se. Um, I'm just kidding, Plucro. You're, you're doing good. I mean, it's good that you're taking your time because most people don't. There is a kind of absence of protection of a7 here, and that's that's a little concerning.
He could actually get a perp, like rook a3, a6, rook takes a6, pawn takes, bishop takes, I mean, queen takes, check, bishop b7. That would be a draw by, by repetition. b6 weakens my position around around the king there, but it might even be necessary. That looks almost insane to do b6. But I guess I could play knight e4 and block his bishop's diagonal. Or something like that. This is very awkward, Blue Crow. You have to admit it looks it looks a tad artificial, but what can I do? I just want to castle kingside. It's going to take me too long to get over there. I have a crazy idea. How am I supposed to protect a7? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that snooker match on TV. That's why I was. That's why I was joking <laughs> about it. Now I'm taking time too because I have a serious problem, you know, with Rook A3, the Welsh Open snooker tournament. That was on TV when I was playing poker one night. <clears throat> um, Rook D3. I hate weakening my position with like <clears throat> b6 and a5 or knight d6 I was thinking about doesn't do anything I mean we're gonna have to do something either a6 or b6 and if I move my rook I can't up with that I can't castle right now I'm taking time ha 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 I know If I play b6, what am I going to do with my other guy? All right. This is one way to defend the a7 pawn, albeit slightly weakening my king position in a sense. I also can't castle now because my rook has moved. But that's all right. Maybe we can put the king on b7 and play like c6. Maybe a5, king b8, just live with the king on b8. I guess in chess 960, you just have to, to make do. I mean, I like that basically I've got these pawns on, on white squares and um, good control of e4. playing b3 which is a little bit menacing I was honestly seriously considering Sacrificing a piece here for three pawns. But he didn't let me do it. Or he didn't even think about it. C4.
in the previous moment, if he had played c4, I could play knight takes c4, b takes c4, queen takes c4, check, and sacrifice a knight for three pawns. Actually, that doesn't even work, because his king can go to b1 or b2 and defend a2. No, his king, his rook was on b1, right? He could go to b2 and defend a2 there, so it didn't really work. I thought he was going to play c4. But I have a perpetual there, queen, queen b5 check. Um, probably it's a draw if he tries to hold on to the a pawn. I have a perpetual check. I don't know if this is too ambitious, but we've got to do something. really feel much better about my king on maybe g8 right at this moment, but it's alright. As I mentioned earlier, we can play king b7, c6, or something like that to cover the king on the white diagonal. My material structure is strange. I've never heard it described like that, the material structure, but... But I understand your point. Well, it's chess 960. That's why. I think you should go for d5 already. A white should go for d5. Perhaps. Uh-oh. Now, queen d5. Or queen g8. The million dollar question. Queen d5, c4, leads to some complications, so, <clears throat> no, but I, I don't know, man, this, this is pretty random. I mean, I'm just playing h6, right? I don't think Crow really fully calculated this out. He's just kind of playing on general basis. But your e4 point, that was the focal point of my Dutch defense, you know. I mean, if I just let you overrun me, I'm dead. But first we open the A-file, then we probably take on... Uh, here he's losing a pawn. He's just trying to create some kind of complications, I guess. Which way? I guess we take this way to have more have more pawns around my king, I would assume. <clears throat> this is constant change's idea to open the diagonal. But I'm not sure that's even a good move. I mean, it could backfire for me. I do like, like the idea of g4, though. We're going to try to um, play for mate. We can take back on g4 or we can go whole hog. Probably sounder to take back on g4. <clears throat> I might have had a stronger move. Man, I think that this is not a bad move, queen g2, defending a2, actually. Because I had, I might have had rook takes a2, honestly, as a rook sacrifice before I played g4. That was actually very, very possible that that worked in that position. And then Plucro defended it. We should objectively be winning now.
but we got some technical problems. Queen c2. Hmm. Uh, knight d4. What? You had b4. I think you had to play b4 there. Rook takes d5. I could play rook c5. But after rook a5, b4 looked pretty strong, honestly. Did you trap me? I don't think so. Did you? Trapped me. You got me, man. You pulled the wool over my eyes. But I don't know after this b4. My interesting moment, I think, is when I play g4, though. Like, do I have rook takes a2 here? I mean, that might just win by force. Rook takes a2, king takes a2, rook a8, check, king b1, rook takes... I don't have enough rooks. Yeah, I don't have enough rooks for that to work. But maybe rook takes a2, king takes, rook check, king b1, knight knight e4. Let me see. It's probably too much material. This rook takes a2. Oh shit, it works. Oh snap. Oh my god, it does work with a double rook sacrifice. Wow, he's just, he's iced after this. Takes, check, king b1, rook takes a1, check. Oh no. Rook takes a1, check, king takes a1, and then knight takes d5, discovered, check. <laughs> what? That's insane. But check out the point, so I play queen g7. How sick is that? Queen g7. And if rook d4, knight c3, check. This is something that I obviously would, you know, I would need some time to calc this. But I'm down a rook here. And I'm giving mate. Because if rook takes d1, queen b2, mate. No, queen c3, queen b2, mate. Queen c3, king b1, queen d2, mate. This is sick, man. It just wins by force. Um, that was the key. The computer is still saying g4 is the best move. It doesn't see the horizon. Why doesn't it remember the analysis I just fed it? You know, why doesn't Stockfish like remember this analysis? Now it sees it. It just it just reached the horizon. Um after G four. G four was a good move too. Queen G two. And now what? I played knight e four. This was a good move, queen c2. The best I had was just defending c7. A pawn up. Rook a5 was provocative, but it allowed b4 here, and I, I don't know. Then I just had to retreat. I thought... I had hallucination, I think. I don't know. I think I hallucinated I could play rook a3 or something. I would have to go back and then and then play this. Black is just a pawn up, but you have some some chances. All right, Mule Skinner, A plus three. If you guys challenge me, make sure it's, um, I need a faster CPO, CPO, CPU. Well, I just, I just use this machine for, um, for general stuff. Um, I have a faster one, but it's got a smaller monitor. <clears throat> so, Let's get started. Yeah, the, the donations come pouring in. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll spend it on a faster CPU. I do have a faster machine, but it's got a smaller monitor and I don't really use it for streaming. Um, C4E5, Mule Skinner. Are you playing the reverse Grand Prix attack like I taught you to? Just kidding. 
Grishuk recently played D3. Grishuk is bored with openings, and I think he must be playing a lot of online poker or something, because this is not the move of someone who's been, like, studying, you know, for weeks. Uh, he also played, like, some knight B3 against the Nidorf recently. Grishuk, um, he's not doing a lot of homework, it looks like. Knight C3 is the main move. Oh man, Mule Skinner, you, how can you play the same thing every game? Don't you, don't you get bored of playing the same opening over and over again? That would kill me. It's like playing the London system every time. You can't get around the Grand Prix attack against everything. He does it against the Pirts too. Like he'll try to force this in all in all positions. All right. Last time I think I played like d3 and went into pretty modest type of setup for white. But I like d3, but he plays bishop c5. I like d3 if they play bishop b4 a little bit better. But I guess I'll play e3. And I played this move myself, the d5 pawn sacrifice. This original game I played against Michael Brooks back in like 1993. Um, Michael Brooks played d5 against me, just froze me in my tracks. I thought for half an hour on one move. Um, unbeknownst to me, it had been played before. Bishop to b4. I don't think that really makes the most sense here. I think the d5 gambit. is best. Blue Crow, I mean, E3 is generally considered better than, than D3, but this D5 pawn sacrifice is is pretty, pretty good for black, I think. Do I game? Uh, not, not a lot. Um, I just tinker around with some video games, but I'm not really a gamer. Okay, castles. So, bishop b4. I mean, he's not going to inflict double pawns. But I might want to consider playing knight d5 at some point. The question is when. You know, that's the million dollar question. Maybe now. If I do play knight d5, what's his answer? There is this guy in the United States who's I am strength player Alexander Kalikstein. He was always like an expert English opening player. I remember once he beat me in like 20 moves in an English where I played the black side of a Grand Prix attack reversed and it was published in Inside Chess magazine. Um, he would understand what to do here. You've got to be kind of a lifetime English specialist to punish this perfectly. I don't know. Um, this looks, this looks inferior for black to me. Okay, maybe it's playable, but he's trying to play like as if he was white or something. Um, it, it looks a little bit over the top. You're black, uh, your tempo down on those Grand Prix attack lines. The question is, now what? He's got take, take, knight, b4 sometimes. It's got to be okay to castle. Now he takes. This is basically a gingy Grand Prix attack line with colors reversed. You guys hear the pitter-patter of little raindrops on on the skylight. And then if I play d4, black has e4 locking the structure. And I think that's what we don't really want to do here. That's what we don't want to do. 
Mule Skinner playing exceedingly fast. If we let him lock the structure, then it seems like black have, has something real, you know. But if we don't let him lock the structure, we keep fluidity in the position. He doesn't have that locked, locked down on, on e4. Yeah, he's playing as if it was... Maybe he watched these Jinji videotapes or something, and he's been playing this ever since. Um... It's really raining now, and I was going to go for a walk after this. That's great. I'm really, really happy. The one day when I don't have a lot of stuff in the afternoon, it starts pouring rain. That's awesome. I'm so excited about it. Now C6. And, like, taking on C6 helps his whole position. It's really irritating. I can play knight c3, going the wrong direction. It looks like he basically like equalized here. It's gotta be better. There's gotta be a better way for me to have played this, because I don't think I have anything here. It looks like totally equal. Damn. Maybe knight d5 was bad. We have no real advantage here. I'm not even sure what my plan is. No, I'm not going to lose on time, but I don't want to move till I'm confident I have a, a good plan. Maybe bishop on c1 actually does a good job stopping f4. So I was thinking twice about playing b3, bishop b2. b4. I guess b4. I don't I don't know what else. Sunny France. World loser in, in my country reign also. Yeah, I'm sure this is like some kind of massive system because it was supposed to rain for like five days or something. Sunny Russia. This is a classic tactical trick in the Sicilian. I use this in the, in the reverse version of this this opening but my setup is kind of lame because these pawn this pawn on d3 is sort of backwards my knight is not really very active on e2 white got no advantage out of the opening i don't know man maybe knight d5 was wrong Or maybe I have to support it with the other knight. Now we could be on to something. He he allowed this b5. So at least executed our minority attack. That coffee was good. I feel awake today. <sighs> you guys are getting weird on me. Um, wow, f4, whoops. Maybe I overlooked that. Yikes. Alright. Hypothetically speaking, I can win a pawn, but it's ugly. Man, f3, no. What am I going to do about this? Oh, this is a disaster. I don't know what to do. I'm in trouble. Grab a pawn? 
what would I do after that? Like, sack the exchange? This is an absolute nightmare. Maybe I can play knight d4 or something. That looks like the only chance, actually. Oh no, that has a problem too? Knight d4. Looks kind of dangerous as well. Also thematic. Alright, we bite the bullet and play it. Like, take, take, knight, d4, bishop, e5, bishop, b2. It getting, it's, it getting kind of tactical in here. Then he has queen, f6. It getting kind of tactical in here. I don't like this. Oh, come on now. Knight d4 fails to bishop d4, bishop b2, queen f6. When I'm in this, like, dastardly pin. Are you kidding me? This is Alright, I guess I just have to take, start taking things. And, like, begging for a draw or something. I don't know. I'm in trouble, I mean... This is just absolutely strategically correct play, you know, playing for f4, I'm playing for the queen side break. But it seems like he's faster than me, you know, he's got this threats against my king. And my threats are only against his, his rook on a8, you know, this, this is a typical... Typical problem with the queen side, king side race type positions. Try to be fancy and play like bishop e5, but it's not really working. I mean, I can play rook b1, knight c3, queen b3 check there with complications, so <clears throat> I don't think that he can be fancy. My real problem was that knight d4 was the move I wanted to play, but he has bishop e5 pinning my knight to my rook, and then if bishop b2. I mean, I guess he has queen f6 there, which looked really awkward and impossible to meet because I have no way to attack his queen. And then I'm pinned along the diagonal, so it's a like game over. Plus, queen f6 brings down more action on the f file. So I had to bail out by trading stuff on f4, which ultimately leaves me with a weak king side and um, probably fighting for my life here. Structurally worse strange move bishop takes f4 i was actually fearing a possible exchange sacrifice but knight takes f4 like bishop takes f4 rook takes f4 or something objectively it's probably not enough but now what pawn takes or bishop takes does it matter probably not down to 28 seconds trying to survive here a defense is my specialty. Queen h4. Queen f3. Pawn takes pawn. I mean, what's going on, dude? Alright, you can't hang knights with check. So, you've got to answer this. You've got to answer this question. Feels like White can probably hang on here, but Bill Skinner played. What's his rating up to 2,000 now? 1,700 in Blitz, 2,000. That's pretty standard here. He's playing fast for a guy who's 1,700 in Blitz, though. Um, he's gotten faster lately, I've noticed. <clears throat> he used to have more time with the clock. And I always assumed he was an old guy, and I said this the last couple streams, but... The mule skinner, it sounds like a hermit in a in a cabin in the woods or something, you know. Um, you just kind of build pictures in your mind about people based on the name of their <laughs> their handle. I was surprised he gave up the dark squared bishop though. I think he'd want to keep that piece on the board. He likes his knight though. Okay, I mean the knight's a good piece too. I I agree. Like 
If you trade the white square bishops, you could have monster knight against bad bishop. You'll never beat a computer in this position. It'll hold on with the bad bishop against good knight. Now he's starting to think. Going into the thought tank. Yeah, I mean, I don't. you have to take back. This is actually... Reminding me of a game I had recently. Whoa. Plants vs. Zombies flashed through the screen. Um, Queen F3. Yeah, I played a little Plants vs. Zombies. Um, Minecraft. I'm not a gamer. Knight takes F4. We have to chop it off. It's, it's violating my airspace. Um, Now, you could be materialistic here. I kind of like the materialistic approach, actually, because we're on the rook. Oh, no. Maybe we're just winning. That's sort of sick. Sick and unfair. We're winning. We're, like, winning by force. Mating him. Well, we're not mating him, unfortunately. We're winning a piece, though. Maybe it's not enough. You shouldn't resign, Mule Skinner. I mean, bishop e6, queen takes e6, check, king h8, and, you know, technically, with those heavy pieces floating around and my king open, um, you've got rook f6 right immediately, like, in my face, threatening mates and stuff, so you shouldn't resign. Maybe I misplayed this. Is there another? Yeah, I misplayed it. I mean, I could play bishop e6, d5, check first, but still you do bishop e6. That's probably a little better way for me to do it, though. I probably have a slightly better... Um, I thought he was better in this game. Computer analysis. I don't like this knight d5. Yeah, th that's inferior. It looks like it's inferior to castles. The computer likes d4. So maybe knight d5 was kind of lame. <clears throat> wow, the computer likes bishop days, whatever, man. Whatever, Mr. Computer. This is pretty modest, and now I don't have any advantage anymore. And he played knight d5, b5, f4, best play, best play, best play. The engine wants to take this bishop, takes d5, come on now. I mean, it'll reach its horizon and, and see that this isn't so good for white. Computer agrees with you with bishop takes f4, Mule Skinner. It doesn't think that you're better. Yeah, now it sees you're better. But the engine wants to play knight takes f4. And I would have leaned that direction myself. But okay, bishop takes f4, pawn takes f4, queen h4. Maybe this was a little too much. God, I'm good. Knight takes f4 and I'm better. This loses by force. All right, guys. Well, Mule Skinner, you were on the right track. I think you were equal. But I was I was a little bit... Um... What's that? What do I look based on? Based on my name. HT1992. Um, let's see. World loser. Yeah, I th the glass troll said hot. All right, open Sicilian. It's hard to judge people with really androgynous names like HT nineteen ninety two. You could be old or young depending on how old I am, um, you're probably, if you're from 1992, you're, you're fairly young. HT gives a lot of information. Um, all right, guys, well, we'll play our usual, our usual stuff here. Susan is the only good thing I know against the Nidorf. We're really, um, kind of limited, kind of limited I only play e4 on a hand by hand, hand by hand, hand selected basis, basically. Um, 
I play e4 against certain opponents. I hand select them. My normal openings lean more toward d4, c4, knight f3. I have played a lot of e4, but usually it's only if they play things that I feel comfortable against. I don't play e4 just generally against everybody. Um, so the knight or if I have just one good system for white. He took on b3 kind of early there. That's not usually considered best. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to play f5 or bishop e3 first or castles here. Not really sure. I would imagine some some cases you could actually castle queenside with white. It's not typical in this particular line to castle queenside. But it certainly could be done. In any case... I remember this piano game where he played like this as black and got his head handed to him by somebody. It looks like black is flirting with the same fate here. After e5. Thematic. You know, the problem with knight a5 and knight takes b3, and this is coming from someone who plays the black side of of these structures. The problem with this is that it consumes a lot of time and it you know it concretely lessens your control of these particular squares like e5 and d4. So when you do the knight a6, knight c6, knight a5, you've got to watch out for, for losing control of e5. And I, I'm not really concerned about material here. You know, if we look at this position in, in terms of, like, Nimsovich, you know, we're looking at it strategically, and, you know, like, oh, second, he blundered. He just blundered a piece, forgetting that I could take his bishop on c6. World loser had a hallucination. But I don't like black's position anyway. I don't like his position anyway. I mean, I guess he wouldn't have done this if, if he had seen that, you know, I could take on c6. He probably would have chosen a different way, but... But in any case, his best play is to just castle here. I mean, just take back. Excuse me. Knight takes d5, e takes d... And then I have to dec decide whether to take on d5 or not, because honestly, his bishops might be pretty good, this type of position. Excuse me, guys. Hiccups. So normally I would trade pieces in this spot, since we're up material. But my knight is pretty monstrous, you have to admit. There's something to keeping that on the board. I don't know if this is a practical mistake or not, you know, to not trade pieces when I'm up a piece like this. But it looks awfully strong. I mean, the knight just seems stronger than the bishop. So overall, in this position, No, maybe we play to like checkmate his queen actually. Maybe this just wins by force. I mean, we're gonna take c6 and mess him up. It's neither here nor there though. I mean, we're up a piece. Hami Tarzan. Blaze of Glory. Yeah. It sounds like a Clint Eastwood movie or something. Perception is something different for everyone. <laughs> Rook a7. Alright. I. 
Yeah, man, this is unhealthy for black. And then... It would be nice... Well, we'll just castle and torture him a little bit. The F-File. I think all of our pieces are about maximum potential here. Got some good ideas. His rook on h8 needs a little bit of help. It reminds me of the game I lost to Plu Crow yesterday. Except I was up a piece in that game instead of down a piece with black, where I just resigned. You know, sometimes you just have lost enough games in a certain kind of scenario. The handwriting's on the wall, and and you know that you're going to lose, so... There's the time that I, I played Kamsky, and I lost a pawn in the middle game with all the pieces on the board, and I just resigned. Because I know against Kamsky that he lives for situations like that, like being up a pawn. It's um, queen takes c4. Is that too risky? You guys think? Everything's good. I mean, queen f3 is good, too. If you lose a pawn against Kamsky, it's like losing a piece against someone else. You're probably better off winning a piece against Kamsky than a pawn. Everyone was so surprised that I resigned, but it was like, well, really? Saying I resigned too early. Um, they're like, what? You resigned? Why did you resign? Do you realize playing like the master of being up a pawn, torturing people for a hundred moves? Um, he he lives for that, you know. World loser is not one to resign, though, as we learned yesterday. He's never won a game by resigning. Queen takes e6 looked good. Yeah, but it just like felt a little bit like bishop f6, and he might have some complications or something. I just didn't want to allow, allow any kind of complications. This looks good, though. I'm like up a rook and a knight. Basically, this rook doesn't exist. So... In this open kind of position, I mean, it should be like a direct, there should be a direct knockout. But there isn't. Unfortunately, there isn't. So, I like where my queen is placed, though. We're inhibiting, ah, g5, of course. All right. Damn, dude does not resign. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll go this way, actually. I like that better. There is, there's a two-pronged kind of attack here. I was threatening to go either way. Maybe the d file, maybe the other. Um... This is where you queue up the the music. What would you, what soundtrack would you put to this game? Damn, dude does not give up. All right, world loser. <laughs> um. For a soundtrack for this, coming to get you. Oh no. Maybe F6 is a good square. We got all kinds of fun in store now. Play with your food. Which way do you want to go? 
that way. Yeah, he's got defenses against that too. We'll have to get you that way. If you got rook g6 on the king's side. He's still down a rook. I mean, this is still non-existent. Oh, no. Oh, right, right. I understand how to win this now. Oh, he has that move, though. just really tedious He's like an expert in, in finding only moves in hopelessly lost positions. Right. You can see the skill. It's not a joke. Like he's obviously highly skilled at finding only move in in totally lost positions. He likes likes doing that. I would be kind of like having a hard time maintaining concentration, but this was the idea. Queen d3 and queen takes g6. So he clearly tries very hard in a position I couldn't maybe maintain the, the focus. Made in one. Almost didn't see it. All right. World Loser, thank you for dragging that out. Constant Change is a tough customer. He's beaten me, notably, three out of the last four games. One was a simul game, where it was a draw, actually. And I just flagged and blundered but I was like blundering because I was flagging so two of them are normal blitz games one of them was a simul game he played e4 I don't remember our last Carol Khan he hung a piece or something but I've been working on this line for black it sounds like a compliment it is kind of a backhanded compliment you know I mean sometimes I talk about the time I lost to Huang Tang Trang She's a GM, a Vietnamese turned Hungarian woman player who's like number two women of he's she's the second highest rated Hungarian woman after Polgar you did. And um once she was like up a rook against I mean down a rook against me and uh and I started to kind of like get angry that she wouldn't resign and then I lost my focus and lost. And I had like a mini tantrum after the game. Um and told her that she should learn how to resign. <laughs> but I was really, you know, I have no one to blame but myself, you know. Um, I did that against Andrew Carklins once too when he drew me down three pawns. Nothing to be proud of though. I mean, you know, you can't be angry at the opponent. It's only you, you know, blaming yourself. Bishop d2. Yeah, I don't know what I'm thinking about here for so long. I played knight f6, though. I meant to play e6. It's a problem. Like, most of my analysis is with is with e6. Got distracted telling stories, and I've messed up. All right. Okay, it's not that different. She would have lost if she knew how to resign, exactly. I, 
I had never like screwed up a rook up position before. There were queens on the board and there were some checks. I mean, it wasn't like a trivial situation, you know, where I just hung a rook in an ending up a rook or something. There were queens on the board. There were some checks. It was slightly complicated, but not really. Um, now he played bishop f4 after a5. That seems kind of odd. All right. I don't remember if we played this before. A3. What's up with bishop f4? I could play knight to d5 at some point. You would imagine. Maybe just b5, b4, and we try to, like, kill white. b5, b4 looks like a pretty strong... Actually, looks like a pretty strong threat. If I need to develop first, maybe. b5 stops c4 as well. Eventually, we might need the castle. Um, but eventually... All right, let's go for this. Well, I guess he'll play c3 if he has to. I don't know. You know, I mean, th this isn't like out of the question, I guess. What concerns me is how fast he plays. He's played the whole game in just 15 seconds. All right. Why is constant change playing so fast? It's it's this it can't slow down because I played a lot of bullet in the last hour or something. I mean, clearly this isn't like a position he ever played before. Very few players play a five. This is an extremely rare line. I mean, it's not like somebody played against him last week, you know, and and he's used to it. Um, it's a special variation that I prepared exclusively. Um, pretty uncommon. Bishop takes e5 now. Looks like b4. We also have queen d5 here. <laughs> Playing the entire game in like five seconds. B4 takes, takes, there, there. Not that clear, B4. Queen D5, F3. Goon Recruiter, Goon Recruiter brought up a very important point. I can only imagine resigning a game when I felt I needed to reserve energy for a later game. And that's exactly a very important point that I brought up in a previous stream. That's the reason why a lot of people should resign in a competitive situation that they don't understand. But I've seen a lot of people lose games in the second round of multi-round multi tournaments because of stupid stuff like that. You know, it's a very, very dumb idea on a practical level to, uh, to play out needlessly bad positions um, to try to save hopeless positions. White here is playing perfectly. I don't know now. I don't really like my game that much. It should be okay, but I don't see anything special. Maybe I should play bishop e7. That actually looks like a solid, a solid idea.
but he's playing this really really well basically perfectly I mean a3 that's a move that um, a lot of players don't know to play and Bishop takes instead of allowing a trade of Queens is very strong now I could consider taking with the pawn maybe not a bad not a bad idea here it's certainly okay to take with the bishop though I guess in a vacuum it's better to take with the bishop the bishop's certainly not worse than the knight But constant change, I don't know. It's like he's going to a fire or something. Like, why does he have to play so fast and not take any time? I mean, how can you be sure about your move? He never answers this question. I mean, I ask again and again and again, and he never answers why he plays so fast. Wouldn't you want to take your time and try to find a better move if you have, like, seven minutes? rather than move instantly every time it seems strange to me like queen c3 is sort of suspicious setting up some kind of cheapo I mean he's got like x-ray threats against g7 and attacking this but objectively it looks like a cheap shot it may be even just a concretely bad move. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, if the position is absolutely hopelessly lost, you guys should resign. If you're like down a piece or nothing, you're not really benefit. It's not benefiting anybody. Um, queen Queen A two is not possible, unfortunately. I have to castle. But it looks like we have some threats here. Queen A2 among them. Um, this this actually could be unpleasant for white. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if I do it now, like, where is he going? After Queen A2. Oh, no. Bishop check doesn't work. Okay. There's also like b4, sacking a pawn for opening lines, which is interesting to say the least. I'm certainly not taking on c5. This, this is objectively best. Queen a2. But he did these moves with like no, no time, you know? Queen c3, bishop takes f6. He had a really, really interesting position, but then moves too fast. I mean, he's capable of better. I mean, at this point, after bishop e7, it looks like white has the upper hand, but needs to play precisely. And then he plays like bishop takes f6. That looks lame, honestly. And then it's like equal, and then he plays queen c3, which is really, really dangerous. So f4 stops bishop g5. b4 this move looks awful good rook d8 targeting d4 we do have tactics with b4 in some situations We're kind of preventing like King D2 evacuation route. Sure evacuation route. If you ever lived in a coastal area, you might have seen signs like that. This looks like <laughs> coastal evacuation route. King D2. Guys, we're streaming for about another hour. 
tomorrow we have another stream, Monday to Friday. And tomorrow's Friday, so Blitz 5 plus 3 only tomorrow. Also, check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. We have some mating threats, right? <laughs> Obviously. Slight problem. And at the very least, we do like bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, queen b, queen a1, check, king d2, queen takes b2 with a crushing position. I mean, I guess he's lost here. And just too many threats. Rook h3. So bishop takes c5, the simple approach, right? Check takes. Do we have anything better? Well, I could try rook d5, or something along those lines. Winning, trying to win, you know, by force. Rook d5. But he has defenses there, it looks like. I think I'm going to go with this. Speaking of rook d5. Well, this pawn is this pawn is a no-no. Um, b4 anybody? Rook d5. Queen takes. Rook. Yeah, it's not so simple. I should play this first. Simple is simple, right? Objectively, he's just a clear pawn down here. Should be a winning position. I think he should try to trade queens, probably. Unless he can do that next. I guess that's his plan. Well, he doesn't really have a lot of choices. This is just a thankless endgame for white, a clear pawn down. We have no weaknesses. I mean, c6 technically, but... He just has a lot more weaknesses, his pawns. All seem like they can be easily becoming a problem. I got my king just one step closer to the center. It probably makes a world of difference. to play g5 all right it's got two minutes to 30 seconds with the with the increment I should be fine I didn't want to allow g5 I probably could though I mean I think that it's probably not absolutely necessary to play f6 but hard for him to do anything active to exploit this because he's so tied down to d4. It's not like he could just double on the e file, you know, real real quickly or something. Um, he's 
It's basically kind of paralyzed here. Perhaps I could have played c5 on that move, the last move. Should be winning. We have pawn up and a better structure. Centralized king and rook. Maybe it's not that easy. Life isn't easy. Right? And there, rook d4, I drop a pawn. Whoops. Let's not be too hasty. That would mess things up, seriously. Um, F5 is interesting. I think we need to play E5 here. Chip away at, at his structure. D5 and F5 eventually. And we'll get invasion at d4. It's a credit that he survived to a rook ending a pawn down, honestly. A credit to him that he survived this far. Because it was, was a really bad situation, objectively. He's got all sorts of tricks and stuff. If I played, uh huh, maybe b4 now. Wow, look at this. Trick after trick. That was tough enough. Mekki's up. Finally took constant change out. Even after he butchered the opening, he still made me fight like a dog to beat him. Barely on time. Master strength, blitz player. Mekki, I don't know if he's here. The last moves were very inaccurate, it seems. Very possible to. Uh, but I didn't I didn't make any horrendous blunders, did I? I mean I'm sure they were inaccurate. With three seconds per move, it's it's kind of hard to play a perfect ending. Um for anybody. I don't know, Mechie uh we'll give him like forty five seconds. Okay, there he is. Good that we waited. All right, I want to play another Karo Khan. I'm kind of working on this opening. Maybe I'll play it in a game or two. I'm going to be playing a GM tournament at the first Saturday in Budapest, the April 1st to Fool's Day. And um, the Karo Khan's not a good winning weapon for black, but it might come in handy to play it as a surprise in a game or two against a stronger player. 
you can win games with black when white is provoked to over over press <laughs> new burger no offense taken i'm i'm sure that we played inaccurately i'm lucky that i even won um pawn takes pawn It's an exchange variation of the Karo Khan with a knight on c3. And we saw Milik yesterday doing something effectively the same. It can actually transpose directly to a Verasov if he plays bishop g5 in the near future. Actually, how should I play this? It's basically like a exchange queen's gambit against the Chigorin. <laughs> um, interesting. He's from Egypt. Let me play one game. What was the one game? Aha. Uh -huh. That was in the Simo Meki. Okay. Here, interesting position. I don't know. You know, this this is this is okay for White, I guess. Quite quite reasonable. Why, why does this remind me of something? If knight f6, he can play bishop g5. Of course, that's nothing to fear. We'll transpose to a game I had on Friday, actually. Last Sunday, I mean. If you play bishop g5, you can transpose. And bishop f4 is the other move. Okay, this is threatening knight b5 in some instances. It's a kind of Verasov where I've exchanged on d4. Bishop f4 seems like it it could potentially be better than bishop g5 for white. You know, is this a threat? I mean, I can play knight a6 if I have to. You could play bishop, bishop d7 if you wanted to, even. Actually, bishop g4 is a move here. It seems kind of silly, though. Bishop g4, what's my idea? Maybe bishop d7. That looks. That looks kind of. Really weird. I can play a6 if I'm very paranoid about knight b5. I guess queen a5 is, is a move too. I've seen that played in uh, in these weird Verasovs with, with bishop on f4, actually. That might even be theory. But I've seen some strange games like bishop takes b8 and then bishop b5 check or something. Queen a5, bishop takes b8, rook takes b8, bishop b5 check, bishop d7, bishop takes d7. I swear I was studying this the other day. Or almost identical position. Bishop takes d7, knight takes d7, or even king takes d7. Queen a5. I didn't really trust the queen a5 move though. Um, bishop g4... But bishop g4 kind of helps him develop. Bishop e2 takes, takes, knight c6. Gets rid of my bad bishop, though. a6 weakens some squares in my position. Taking my time to try to find the best move, people. If you're wondering why I'm thinking so long. Bishop g4, f3, idea, bishop d7, knight b5, bishop takes takes knight c6 that looks okay for black I don't know guys we have to make a move at some point probably a theoretical novelty bishop g4 it looks like a Jabava London it probably is uh, transposing into those aggressive London lines very possible I have a friend who plays that type of stuff um, I'm sure that Jababa isn't the inventor but he's certainly popularized it so we have to stay stay back in the in the vicinity of the Queen side because he's got this Knight b5 which is really nasty and I don't want to play Knight a6 you know, you don't want to play knight a6 ever. That happened to me against Yevgeny Sveshnikov. 
um, in a C3 Sicilian, and you just, you don't want to go there, trust me. It's like your knight is forever pinned down to A6, and you can't free your rook from A8 because your A7 pawn is hanging. It's like a disaster. Um, now E6, for, for lack of a better move, I mean, maybe I should just play knight c6 at that point, because knight b5 is no longer a threat, but it wouldn't really... Actually, it could change things. Maybe knight c6 is more accurate than e6, because if he plays knight e2, I could play knight b4. That's possible. That's a relevant... That's a very relevant point. I could go after his white-squared bishop there. Maybe I made a boo-boo. It's not a major mistake, but it seems like it would have been more accurate for me to play knight c6 first. Okay, black's still okay, but it's it's a little bit of a passive setup, and I wouldn't mind something more more active. Now he played a3 anyway. Well, that will more or less... That could more or less transpose, I suppose. I suppose it would transpose. Now if knight b5, rook c8. Is that even good for me? Maybe I need to play queen b6. That's asking for trouble too. Yeah, I screwed up with this move order. a6 again. Rears its ugly head as a concept. Maybe not so bad. If nothing else, I can play a6. I don't really like it. I could play knight c6, knight b5. Then I have to play rook c8. If knight d6 check, he loses a pawn. There's all sorts of complications. Knight c6, knight e2. There's also some weird moves with knight h5. He just plays bishop e3. Knight h5 at some point. There's another plan with bishop c6 here. Bishop c6. Might be awkward after like b4 though. Probably not a big deal, but... I don't know, guys. F3, E5. Uh, maybe. That's pretty crazy stuff. We're clearly threatening to swipe this pawn on D4. Mechie is 1784, only 64 games. He lost a simul game against me, where he, uh, it was a Catalan, and, and he allowed me a really, really powerful attack along the D-line. So, made a mistake in the opening. A6 looks fine, Uberger, but it makes more weaknesses in the structure on the queen side, and these squares start to look kind of creepy, you know. Um, I agree the A6, A6 is fine, but it, not, no move I could find, I really I found, like, I really, really, really liked it, you know, like, was really clean and, and clearly best. Um, they all seem to have some kind of, like, minor, f like, fault um, here. Knight b5 is the question, you know, rook c8. And then he has some weird moves. Knight d6 check looks like it loses a pawn. Um, but he could try maybe bishop d6. Bishop takes d6. Knight takes d6. Check. King e7. Knight takes b7. What am I doing? Oh yeah. Queen b6. Does that make sense? Now I guess we can do bishop e7. Also knight h5 is possible. But what does that achieve? 
And knight h5 looks like a, a mistake. Now he's threatening knight b5 again. Maybe I should castle. Get ready to castle. But black is passive. You know, I, I like white here a little bit. White's more active. Structurally, there's some questions about a3 and b2 and d4 and f3, but it's not easy for me to do anything. I'm not really an active setup. I don't have an active setup. It's hard for me to exploit any kind of pawn weaknesses here. Queen d2, I'm not sure what he's doing with that. Slightly weird move. So I guess we castle. Oh, is he going to go postal here? I mean, I don't mind, you know. If you want to castle into an open file, it's fine with me. It's a highly risky play for white to castle queenside. But I guess it's viable if you really want to be... If you really want to play hyper-aggressively, h4. That's an interesting move, so he's not committing... Of course, there's knight, knight h5 now. And then he has bishop g5 at least. All right, so he's attacking me on the king side. We should strike in the center. Knight h5, maybe e5. Losing my control of the center. I don't know. He's going to play g4 next. I'm a little concerned about this, obviously. Man, I don't know, man. This, this looks kind of scary for black, and I have no counterplay. 1700. I'm walking directly into this attack. Alright, whatever. I don't know. He's got three minutes. I'll try to use the C file. I almost played rook e8, but it doesn't really do anything. But I shouldn't panic. Do not panic. Thinking maybe knight a5, knight c4. But I like the way he played this, where he just doesn't castle and uh, keeps me guessing. Because I, I, if he castles queenside, I know what to do. And if he castles kingside, I know what to do. But he didn't castle either side. And now he initiates the attack first off. Um... h6, he's going to sack a piece there. If I play h6, he could sacrifice a piece on h6. Kind of ominous threats. Definitely think white's better here. Maybe I have tactics to save myself. Maybe. I don't know. With rookie 8, I might have knight takes d4 at some point. This would be... This would be an idea. Knight takes d4 followed by e5. But I'm not sure if it's enough or not. Leonard from... You, I remind you of Leonard from Big Bang? What? No, I'm, conf, I'm con, confusing television shows. You played Knight G1. What? Are you kidding me? Well, you don't mean like Third Rock from the Sun. 
I don't know Big Bang. I thought you were talking about a different show for a second. Um, <laughs> never mind. I'm too old. I'm still living in like the early 2000s. Knight takes d4. Why would he do knight g1? Like right on the verge of killing me, he plays knight g1. I mean, h6 is certainly good. g4 is interesting. But he played knight g1. Uh, that was tragic. I mean, he has me dead to rights there. All right, now we just have to move fast. Defend quickly. Eliminate attacking pieces. Think like robot. Bishop d3 bad, must go. Bishop g5 bad, must go. Yes, I could have taken the bishop, most likely, but it was a little bit weird, so I decided not to take it. This is my pre-programmed robot response, 95, which should clarify the situation somewhat, hopefully. Probably end up hanging a piece in some bizarre fashion. It's actually very appropriate against bishop h6. Um, all right, we're eating pieces now. Safe on the dark squares. We have immunity from prosecution. Immunity from dark square prosecution. Yes, I could check first, but Namiki, man, you had me busted almost. Kind of like what happened with Andrea earlier. He, he gets a massive strategic advantage, but then fails to execute. Okay, I'm a good defensive player. I mean, I, I admit. I'm the first one to admit it. I'm just trading pieces with this move. Um, Mekia, how big was your advantage? That's the question. I mean when when you blundered or went berserk Peter actually thinks I'm okay here I mean let's see h4 it's the calmly playing queen b6 and now it starts to realize we have some problems okay the engine thinks I'm like so it's okay you're a little worse it's not so bad and now it's like well yeah you have some problems and rook e8 and that might have been too passive yeah, so 0.7. No, takes it back. All right. Anyway, white slightly better. He has the better half of this position. I mean, he's got the attack already on the way. And um, I think the Mechie just like lost his mind when he played knight g1. So I don't know what happened. Maybe it was a mouse slip or something. But he couldn't really mouse slip by touching the knight. You could do something like maybe touch your queen and tend to play queen e3. Maybe try to grab your bishop on the way to grabbing your bishop, touch your knight. But this is a really good, really good position. What did I do? I did rook e8. The computer didn't like that. Knight a5, I should just go immediately. Start the counterplay on the queen side before it's too late. <laughs> Maybe not a bad idea. I, I thought he might play b3, honestly. Um, but then he'll probably not be on the castle queen side if he plays b3. So he can't have everything, right? We play knight a5, we force him to play b3 to keep me off of c4, and then he can't castle queenside anymore. That's the point. All right, Mekki, good opening. We'll have to investigate that a little bit further. I don't think his plan was to castle kingside, but who knows. e4, Kyriakospes, continue the Karo Khan class. 
I don't remember if. Well, I'm, I mean, Kyria Kuspes normally plays d4. So I don't remember if we've ever played a Karo Khan. Everybody's playing this. I play e takes d2, but we have to understand the limitations of this move strategically. You could transpose to my last game. Come on, play knight c3. Go into the Verasov. Oh no, maybe there was a game like this. Shosh. What's the guy's name? There's a Hungarian IM named Shosh. It looks like S O O S. I don't remember his first name. Shosh Laszlo, I think. He plays this. Or some version of an early H3. Ah, it's a move, you know. It's not really great for white. Maybe we did have one game like this already. So against that guy, Shosha, I guess, we had queen c7, I think, stopping bishop f4. Whoops. This is a classic, like, queen's gambit exchange variation. That's what this is, basically. We're playing the white side of the queen's gambit exchange variation, a tempo down. But his extra tempo has now been spent on h3, which is kind of a debatable move. Obviously slow, with a clear point of, of inhibiting bishop g4. But that's his white, you know, first move advantage right there. I mean, you got to think that that's not really dangerous. Knight c3 now, with my queen on c7. That's kind of disturbing. Anyway, I'm not going to spend all day on this position. I had to defend my pawn. Oh, this is weird. Whew, I feel like a sigh of relief when he played bishop g5. I was scared of actually like knight b5, queen b8, g3, threatening bishop f4. What do I do there? I mean, I might be almost busted after after knight b5. Okay, I guess I could play queen a5 check or something like that. Then he plays bishop d2, queen b6. Is knight b5 just like winning for white? I mean, is that possible? The second time we've had this in two games, with some... What the heck? Knight f6, knight b5. Okay, I know I'm wasting my time and it's just like hypotheticals, but now knight e4. Now knight e4 might be good. Might also be almost forced. Is anything else is kind of passive? I could play e6. <clears throat> e6 we have time for now because knight b5 queen a5 check actually what what's the difference like after e6 knight b5 queen a5 check bishop d2 queen b6 bishop f4 ah there is a difference though a very small difference but then he has bishop f4 anyway so we should go knight e4. Dropping knight takes d5. Am I out of my mind? Then I have queen a5 check. Dude, this is starting to kind of bother me. What is going on here? All right, knight e4, knight takes d5, queen a5 check. We're picking up his knight or bishop or something for free. Um, so we can do this. And knight b5, queen a5 check. But... What was bothering me about this position was, was like this constant knight b5. If he had played it last move, I don't know what I was going to do. You know, here, queen b6, what does that do? He plays bishop f4. I'm basically like lost. So knight a5, queen b6 check, bishop d2, queen a5 check, bishop d2. 
I'm going to have to just play e5 and like lose a pawn to stop bishop f4, knight b5. Queen a5 check, bishop d2, queen b6, or queen b6, bishop f4, e5, just down a pawn. That's fantastic. I'm almost done with challenges. Um, Yeah, we have, exactly. I mean, at the most, we're going to play these last two guys. So no more challenges for today. You don't have to play like this, <laughs> said Newberger. I know. I know I don't have to play like this. Oh, you mean h3? But h3 is not so stupid, Newberger. I mean, this is actually... This is a tricky little line. Um, black has to be accurate. Maybe I played queen c7 too early. I mean, I certainly did. I guess queen c7 isn't really appropriate unless he's played maybe bishop d3. I guess I have to play knight f6 after knight f3 and play queen c7 on bishop d3 or obviously c3 I have to play knight f6 first after h3 and then after bishop d3 queen c7 I don't remember how the line goes actually c3 I think then e5 if I'm not mistaken now bishop d3 I'll... Um, what What is going on here? All right, I'm taking that bishop. You're not going to convince me otherwise. And, yo, if you want to take my h7 pawn, help yourself. Good luck with that. Good luck on the escape route. On the return trip is going to be a rough one <laughs> for the knight on h7. Is is not going to like, you know, going home to grandmother's house after this. There will not be a return trip. It's a one-way ticket to h7. Now, it's possible you have some other tactics and whatnot, but I, I really doubt that he can take that h7 pawn and and be happy with the result. It's all just a, it's all a bluff. It's I'm just bluffing. Just take it and find out. Um, who I feel very very lucky to be alive here though. I mean, the second game where I face this Rogozin type of stuff with with knight b5. Queen c7 is just not good. You'd think h3 was just utterly harmless. But it's actually not. Okay, I mean, maybe we should look at another line. Um, all right, seriously. After knight f6, knight b5, queen b8. Okay, this was my plan, but the problem is g3. And I didn't see a way to play. Maybe there's another move for me there. I, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it. No, there's no other move. I mean, I'm, I'm screwed, basically. It's like a c3 Sicilian gone bad. I could play a6, bishop f4, e5. I'm just dead in the water. It looks like a bad Scandinavian or something. I don't know. He doesn't want to allow bishop f4, I guess. After bishop d3, well, I mean, it's a typical move in, in the exchange queen's gambit. You know, queen c2. It's played almost universally. This is a, queen, a queen's gambit exchange variation with colors reversed. That's the square where the queen normally goes. Just, it's a question of when. Um, that's the only, only thing. Now my bishop is blocked in on c8 in this what is basically a Chigorin I guess now a6 probably needs to be played in order to develop actively with bishop d6 and not allow knight b5 
I was mildly concerned about Queen E2 there. That might have been annoying. Um, you know what? I mean, I'm just talking and talking about playing Bishop D6, but what does Bishop D6 even do? You know, maybe that's not even the right plan for me here. Maybe I should play, like, G6 and Bishop G7. It's a safer king side. At this point. We have a bad bishop, admittedly. But his pawn is, is very vulnerable on d4. Now, so he's forced to play this passive plan. We can roll in the center or pursue the minority attack here. I guess minority attack seems a little bit... Why do I need to play well? It's a bit weird to do a minority attack with a bishop on g7, is it? Well, maybe not. This is helping to influence the center. Notice how safe our king is with that g6 setup. All right. Maybe I better play b4 before it's too late. Get it in while the getting's good. If I let him play b4, it could be a long game. I think he has like reasonable chances here, though. Yes, he has a bad pawn structure. Oh, we had a game in a similar structure. I remember that now. Kira Kospes, a much, much different, much, much different version of the structure where he likes this, actually. I, I forgot. Um... We have e5 in some lines, maybe. What am I going to do? Bishop d7? That seems kind of bizarre to play bishop d7, but... I want to play bishop a6, I guess. That has problems, too. Oh, no. What am I doing here? How do I get my bishop out? Kirikosvitz is the expert with this structure. This is the second time we had this exact structure on the queen side. Last time he almost beat me because of this same thing, this bizarre bishop a4. All right, man. You win. You win control of c6 and d7. Congratulations. He likes this structure. He likes having the minority attack played against him. It's very strange. But last time I overestimated my position entirely in a similar situation. We're probably gonna have time for like one more game after this, guys. Please check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. Um, this was obviously a waste of time to play Queen A7, by the way, but I wanted to play Bishop A6, get the guy in the game. So maybe it wasn't a waste of time. He has 97. What am I going to do, you know, for the follow-up? If I play bishop a6, look at this guy. He's a positional genius. I have to be careful. This bishop is a key piece. My goodness. We have to be careful where we go here, but I don't really have a good suggestion. I have to go here. Whoa, man. What is going on? My mouse. Oh, no, my mouse. Yeah, he's a genius, dude. He's like smoking me here. Wow. I'm losing a pawn by force.
Luckily, he's got a bad structure. So we can probably pick off that A3 pawn. Or at least get some good counterplay. He's actually gone up in rating. 2,000 now. Why did he go there? To E5. Why would you choose E5? That's some sort of trick? I don't remember he was over 2,000 before. But he should have moved the bishop and played a4. Famous last words. This is ridiculous. Um, now knight d6 to play knight g7. Are you kidding me? What is going on around here? Oh my god. G4, that's a genius move. I guess I should have played knight d6, but I interfere with my bishop on f8. Yeah, this is another ingenious move, threatening knight d8. But I guess it doesn't win by force. I can play f6. He'll mate me with the two knights and, and the bishop in the corner. Some insane shit. There's a check. We lost on time. <laughs> It was a tough game, man. I mean, you're just better. Final position is about equal. Okay, I'm better. Better finally, but I mean, this game was, was excellent by white. So queen c7 is a bad novelty. Some good guys played this line for white. LeBron, Koryaitza, Gallego, uh, all, all reasonable players. Queen c7 is like a blunder. Because of knight c3. Oh shit. I have a move. Knight f6, knight b5, queen b8, and then. Oh no, I'm just busted here. It's gotta be busted. g3. Knight h5. Yeah, I was looking for a move. That's like the only move. How, how pathetic is that? That's losing. Oh my god. Wow. So I. Just blundered that, and now I was surprised that we're not back in some theory here. Gives me his bishop, and it says I'm better, but maybe this was the wrong plan. I was okay, but I, I let it get a little weird at the end. He defended really well. I had 95. Actually, I saw that and then forgot about it. It was actually my original plan. But I wasn't sure about knight e5. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Bishop takes e5, knight takes e6. And I started to freak out because of knight takes e6. And then I got a little bit passive. And he was better at some point. Maybe he was never winning. Okay. So I was lucky. I thought I was close to lost here. After knight takes there, bishop f8. Yeah, see, he has a bishop move and he saves his a pawn. This is not a joke. I'm a pawn down here. All right, guys, last game for today. Looks like a million miles away. You're exhausted. Goodbye. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Thanks, Blue Crow, for moderating. Let's play a King's Indian if we get the chance. Something active. Really good game, Kira Kospes. Could have busted me in the opening. In an innocuous looking position, but I'm just I knew it as soon as I played it that uh that knight b five and g three. Oh man. It happens in the C three Sicilian. 
um, sometimes similar line you guys just don't stop with the knight c3s you like putting your knight in front of the right that was the point to crow what you're trying to explain there is that knight d6 it blocks my bishop from attacking a3 exactly another annoying line with knight c3 is there an echo in here a million miles away no you have to play you can either play a, a hebden what is it the barry attack with bishop f4 yeah i mean i guess that's the main move bishop g5 actually I don't know what that is, like a weird, another weird kind of, bishop f4 is the best move, again. We're going to get the same position again, guys. Let's not put the queen on c7. We might have to. No, but e3 is just too passive. There's absolutely no reason to play that. Bishop g5 may be a move, but bishop f4, and after bishop f4, there's two ways for white to play. One of them is the hebden Barry attack with like e3 and h, h4, h5, and all that nonsense. And the other way is the Sharashevsky, um Soviet chess conveyor attack with queen d2 which uh, went through a, a brief popularity in the 90s when Cherashevsky published his book, The Soviet Chess Conveyor, um, among other people. I picked that up and, and got a lot of ideas out of it. Cherashevsky was the guy who wrote Endgame Strategy, probably the greatest endgame book um, ever written. I mean, nowadays maybe there are more, but at the time it was the, is the best endgame book um, in general. Now here black has a lot of different options. You can play like bishop g4 probably. Um, but c5 looks thematic. Playing like a Catalan. His bishop is on the wrong square it seems. You know in lines in the Catalan like you normally want the bishop on e2. It's never going to get hit by like e4, e, you know e5, e4. Um, it doesn't block the queen pressuring d5. It doesn't get hit by stuff like if you take on c5 and the knight bounces into a into c5. So there are a number of reasons why the bishop is actually maybe better placed in some cases on on e2. That's a screwed up Kali, yeah, basically Kola system. I don't know how it's pronounced. Kola, I don't know. Someone, I think I tried to ask someone that and they, they didn't look it up, but Edgar Kohl, right? I think it's Edgar, the Kohl system, Kohl, Kohl, well, Belgian, Belgian. So we have to pronounce it in a Belgian accent. We need a Belgian person to help us, at least French speaking person, to help us understand, but we don't know, was he from the, the Dutch part of Belgium or the or the French-speaking part of Belgium? That's the question. Kali. Does anybody know which part of Belgium Edgar Kali was from and how we should pronounce his name? D takes C5. Right. You know, I was advocating this idea to one of my students not too long ago. <laughs> Actually, Knight A6, um, nothing wrong with that you know he can chop it off but he's wasted a move we have a very dynamic two bishops but I guess if I don't have to allow doubled isolated pawns to get my pawn back I would probably choose a more calm method of, uh, of regaining the pawn knight d7 the problem with knight d7 is that there is no problem with knight d7 What's the problem with knight d7? There shouldn't be a problem with it. C-O-L-L-E. 
and apparently he was from Belgium. But I don't know. Edgard. Uh-huh. Edgard. Well, that sounds more like Dutch to me. But our moderator is gone. Jeroen, our Dutch moderator. Um, this Edgard, it's a hard sound. It doesn't sound like a French-speaking name, but I could be wrong. I watch the Aristocats, you know, and it's Edgar, but I'm not sure that really plays a role here. Knight e2. Oh no, that's awful pass a million miles away. I mean, basically, knight a4 looks like, knight a4 looks like the move, and I would probably play our beloved queen c7, <laughs> our beloved queen c7, the move of the day to try to regain my pawn, and then I was calculating queen c7, b4, when it gets really scary. I have to play in gambit style, um, no discoveries per se with my knight, like knight e4, rook b1, and I didn't find anything, you know, so it would have been interesting to see what happens after knight a4. But after knight e2, you just give me the pawn back in a very, very comfortable position. So. Maybe I could even play a better move here. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of greedy to play e5. That looks unnecessary and complicated. Flemish is Dutch, apparently. No, it's not Dutch, but at least it's like close to... Closer to... Closer to that part of the world than anywhere else, I guess. Um... couldn't think of the word Flemish off the top of my head since their closest border is with Holland you would think there would be a connection somehow maybe I'm wrong Knight takes c5 from Ghent so is it how is it pronounced? Coal. Okay. Very few people know that. And I'm glad we Googled it. Because Google is right about everything. Bishop d2, very compact, million miles away. Yeah, that looks like a good move. I'm not really sure what to do now. Look how compact he's playing. It's nice. This, I like this. This is actually, you know, kind of not that well coordinated, but he has no pawn weaknesses. I like the I like the spirit he's playing in here. I would have preferred knight a4, but being that that's off the table now, um, bishop d2 looks like a very, very good try under the circumstances. I think. Um, my problem with this position is that I can do any kind of routine, routine type of stuff, you know, with like b6, bishop c3, bishop b7. But ultimately, I feel like he's getting this kind of nasty control of e5 that it's going to be hard for me to, to negate. Maybe knight e4? Knight F E four, anybody? Let's go for it. We only live once, I think, but I'm also not sure about that. Doesn't look like a Dutch name. No, it doesn't look like a Dutch name. But I just didn't think Edgar with a D on the end sounded very Francais. The hard ending, maybe. I don't know. That's just my guess. I was hoping we have a Belgian here in the stream, but 
apparently not. I mean, Plucro lives in France. That's sort of close. He should be helping us. Yes, I know France and Belgium are different countries. Should we get a wise guy telling me that? Um, Alright, now that looks suspicious. Where are you going with knight d4? The temptation is to play e5, just no brain. No brainer. I mean, I guess we're just getting a free center. But still, it does interfere with my bishop on... Yeah, that's a nice straight line. I'm good at drawing straight lines. It, it gets in the way of, of my own bishop, you know, so it's kind of tough, but... It's a tough life, you know, tough life. We've got the strong center. And now he wants to trade for my knight for knight. We could take both bishops here, but in that situation, actually, he's, he's happy, you know, to play two knights against two bishops and lock the structure. That's actually, uh, looks to me like a good thing for him. I'm looking at knight a4. Avoiding exchanges. You can play knight takes d2. Just take one. One bishop. And then play something like knight a4. The super bizarre position. <laughs> this is funny. I, I don't know what to do, really. I mean... I'm not sure, peoples, what to do. Was Belgium the country who got invaded first? <laughs> I thought that Sweden got invaded first, but I'm, I'm wrong about everything. Um, maybe Poland got invaded first, technically. Don't ask me historical questions. All right, knight a4. Doesn't seem right, does it, to play knight a4? I could play knight e6, bishop b4, rook e8. That looks ridiculous too. Wow, this is a strange game. Maybe knight takes d2, queen takes d2, knight a4. Then he plays c3. Then we play something like bishop d7. Oh, difficult to choose. I don't know, guys, what to do here. I'm trying to find a kind of method of playing that leaves me with some kind of plan. Um, harmonious pieces. Simply taking his bishop now leads to two knights versus two bishops pretty locked structure maybe that that's what the computer engine will do but it just looks like i've played this kind of position before it's, it's very tedious um he locks the structure with d4 it's very easy for white to play he puts all his pieces on the c file trades all the rooks Knight takes e4. Maybe I just play b6 here, actually. That's another possibility. Um, or something like neutral move, like queen c7. Our favorite move of the day. Knight e4. Nah. Knight a4. It seems odd to play knight a4, honestly. Queen c7. Pinning myself is always a good idea. Queen e7 is also a self pin. All right, let's play the most complicated move we can play with like 14 seconds left. Eyeing the b2 square, avoiding exchanges of pieces, threatening e4. 
no time, but at least we have ideas. We haven't really committed ourselves to a structure. His knight is bad on b3. Proud of myself for being patient here. Because there was a million bad moves I could have played. His pieces are very passive, right? Those two knights and the bishop and the queen. Our last game for today, guys, we're over time. This is like a vulture hanging over the position. Look how well he's playing this. We have a tactical resource, maybe, at some point. Should I play rook a d8, probably, rather than rook f d8? Because I don't want my rook pinned to the b7 pawn. He's also tied down to b2 in some lines. At the moment, my bishop h6 is dead. Simpler was knight c5. This is okay. Not a bad move, obviously. So we've got something now. We finally cracked under the pressure. But I'm proud of the way that I played this because there was a lot of tension and I didn't cave in and make a bad move, which is very tempting. No discoveries. Oh no. Really miles away. It was a little passive, but you, you gave it you gave it a good try. So knight a four in the opening would have been would have been key. I mean I'm just curious if we look for a second at at that position what the best move was that I spent so much time on here. Yeah, I'm right. So knight a4 has been played in a couple of games. Just some random dudes. I mean, it's not really a good setup for white. b4 is interesting. You can sack the exchange after b4. Knight takes d5, knight e4. Bishop takes e4, bishop takes a1. That looks like the computer is giving that line. Um, so this was too passive. Knight e2. I could have played e5. I played knight takes c5. And then bishop d2. And then I sat here for a while and played knight e4 best move according to the engine on insta move mode here maybe yeah the computer says knight c3 so I'm good knight d4 was a bad move and then here and then this position where I, I sat and thought forever um, the computer goes for what knight takes d2 then it changes mind to a5 which is a move that my engine's not very fast my computer is not that fast so this this isn't necessarily best it goes with my move, knight takes d2, queen takes d2, and then b6, which was my second line. I didn't like knight takes c5, b takes c5, and maybe like c4 there. But it looks like he can't do that because of tactics. Let's see, b6 takes, takes c4, like blockading the position. I wasn't happy about this, this blockading. Oh no, he drops a piece, of course. So, so b6 was was the best and flexible. Um, but I did knight a4, which is also a decent move. c3, bishop d7. All right, guys, we're gonna close it out for today. Um, I decided not to not to commit to anything. B6 was okay though. We have a good position. All right, guys, we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, Blue Crow, for being our moderator. Thanks, everybody, for watching and bearing with me as I tediously analyze boring positions. Um, we will be back tomorrow. Check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. Also, if you have any questions, you can always email me, or if you have 
any interest in taking lessons, send me an email at videochesstrainer at gmail.com. Um, what else? Sunday there's no simul because I'm going to be away for the day. So Friday tomorrow is Fast Blitz 5 plus 3, 10 a.m. CET. And then we'll be back on streaming Monday. Bye-bye.